Wow. Next trick, next trick, next trick. And I just started having fun with it. He won't tell us too much about what he does to his bike. You prepared to throw any light on it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of work to get the double flip and then to throw in those tricks. I mean, it's crazy. It is so insane. In 2009, 17-year-old freestyle motocross prodigy Levi Sherwood rode into the world's largest bull ring, the monumental Plaza de Toros in Mexico City, put together a two-minute FMX run of such scale and creative genius that not only would it blow away the opposition, but it would change the sport forever. Wow, he flies so high above the bike. He has such incredible extension. Levi again and again raises the bar, redefining what can be achieved on freestyle motocross bikes and is by some way the most successful Red Bull X fighter in history. Levi Sherwood wins again. I've come to Levi's hometown in the heart of New Zealand's North Island to get his thoughts on 10 years at the top of the world's most spectacular sport and to find out about his plans for the future. Levi Sherwood, world tour champion. He is this kid, Levi Sherwood. Levi Sherwood, Sherwood takes it. Well, I don't mind admitting I'm really excited because I haven't seen Levi for years and years. I'm going to go and meet him at his compound, somewhere he spends a lot of his time. He's got his ramps there where he rides, and he's also got this big engineering workshop where, you know, Levi's a man that can't sit still. He's constantly progressing himself and his sport, and I'm really excited to see what he's up to. Yeah, this is it. There's all the ramps and the big landing down there in the bottom of that valley. Wow. That's where all the magic happens. Let's see if he's here. Hello, mate. G'day, how are you? How are you? Long time no see, yes, all right? Man. Yeah, I'm good, how about you? I'm all right, mate, actually. Oh, I'll come in. Look at this place. So, Levi, great to be here in New Zealand. Little journey to get here, but well worth it. Look where you live. I've caught you in a period of recuperation. Yeah, it's a funny one actually. I, I've just kind of come off a broken ankle uh, or heel bone and then first day back didn't go so well. Ooh. Got a concussion, crash, fracture um, my face there. I actually don't know what the bone is, but anyway, so I'm kind of taking a little bit of time off to let my head recover. Is this where you're from, Palmerston North? Yeah, born and bred Palmy. Born and bred here, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Ever tempted to go and live more like Cali with all the other FMX dudes? I mean, you're pretty far away from everything. Uh, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy being kind of like uncontactable when I need to be or just, you know, <laughs> completely distant from everything. I don't like the being in whatever scene or, or anything. Don't you? No, um, it's actually better for me because no one knows what I'm doing. Um, you that? know, when I was in California and pushing it, there's all, I'm always riding with someone or someone's already, already watching, especially with social media these days. Before yeah. you know it, someone wants to get their likes and put you in your trick out. But here I can keep everything quiet. I can build a new jump, build a new ramp, do whatever I need to do. And no one's got an idea of what's going on. It's, so it's like a secret FMX hideout. It yeah, exactly. Is. Everyone, no one knows what's going on. It's good. The technology now in FMX, as far as the bikes goes, is massive, right? It's at the stage where our technology was here, our bikes and ramps were here, yeah. and then our ability slowly caught up, slowly yeah. caught up, until now, our ability is all the way up here, and we're riding bikes that are, are made for racing. We're jumping yes, ramps that were right. made, made for the 2000s, you know, so. You ride a modified motocross bike. That's right. It's that's a race right. bike, it's if, not an if, FMX bike. If you, if you go to the skate park, you ride a, a freestyle BMX. You go to the track, yeah. you ride a track BMX. That's where I'm at, as I'm building a freestyle bike, let alone not a motocross bike. That's that's where I see yeah. it going, yeah. Levi, I can't wait to get down in a workshop, obviously. I can't wait to see all that stuff down there. But before we do, let's talk about 
your X Fighters career, a stunning career which started in 2009, almost 10 years ago to the day. You turned up in Mexico City and changed the sport forever. I think Lee, my spine became detached there. How did he do that? 17 years old, he is a giant killer, and you're going to be seeing him for a long time to come. I got an invite, a wild card, and I was like, whoa, you know? The year before that, I'd been watching on TV, like, yeah, I'm going to be riding with these dudes one day. In your head, you're like, I can hang with them. I can do those tricks. I Did you? Do. You had that belief? That's right. Levi Sherwood has a very successful career ahead of him. Do you remember riding out into the arena for the final? I remember one thing in the final was I didn't know it was two minutes. I remember seeing the clock, and I was just about finished my minute 30 run, and I was like, what? Is that another? <laughs> 30 or 40 seconds, and I was just blowing away. I'm like, all right, next trick, next trick, next trick. And I just started having fun with it. Wow. Oh, look at how extended he is. How does he do that? This kid is a treat to watch. From that, I ended up make, you know, doing a lot more preparation before my rounds. But that was the rawness that probably took you to that yeah. win. Who did you beat in the final? Ego Sato. Was it really? Sherwood takes it. He wins. Mexico City! That was a pretty special one for me. 2010, you sort of found your feet then in the X Fighters series more and more and took two massive wins. Let's talk about Moscow, Red Square. Yeah. Where you took the win and I think one of the sickest tricks in 10 years of commentating on X Fighters that I ever saw was your KOD flip with an uphill jump. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, Moscow was a lot of fun. Oh, and again, that fantastic ruler, a kiss of death. I don't know any old veterans that can pull that trick. It was one of those places, it just clicked, everything clicked. I guess it comes down to confidence, right? That's it, you're yeah. having fun, confidence, and... Not you're worrying um, about anything. Yeah, you're, you're not, not even just worried riding. about results. You're like, primo, qualifying's up, awesome, get to go riding. Yeah. You know, it's one of those times. So those are the times where it's really, you know, you can just see it shine, you're like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from one iconic venue to another, Red Square to Battersea Power Station in London, another big win for you. I mean, that was, a, that was an incredible night as well. Oh, my goodness! The extension on it is sublime. 18-year-old wonder kid Levi Sherwood in first place. So 2010, career was still going up. 2011, it kind of changed a bit, well, quite a bit, with a massive accident, which is definitely, without a doubt, and unfortunately, part and parcel of FMX. My bike slipped into neutral in the takeoff. Did it? And did it? Jumped through anyway, hit the back of the landing, knocked myself out, broke a bunch of stuff, and that put me out for a while. Since that point, I know my bike inside out. I mean, yeah, like you say, like yeah. you said nothing's really an accident. No. And you might not have put it in gear properly, but it's massively unlikely, isn't it? Bikes... Yeah, but everything's preventable. So well, how I say the accident thing is if we take it back six months, I broke my femur the year before at, at a competition in California. I knocked my bike into neutral in a double-double line and then coasted off the takeoff and chucked my bike, landed, broke my femur. Anyway, Quite but the mechanic from KTM at that time was like, look, I've got this part for you, it's going to stop your bike slipping into neutral like that. And if it does slip a gear, it's going to go to first, not neutral. So it really limits the amount you yeah. can get into neutral. And I was like, primo, thank you, I'm going to use this. If I had that part of my bike in Vegas, probably wouldn't have, have happened. Right on. Because it, that's what it's for, is to limit false neutrals. The reason I say it wasn't an accident is because I, 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 that was preventable on my part. Like that was, it was, that was just lack of preparation. And I want myself to be the error when I'm on the bike. I yeah. don't want it to be the error, but I don't want anything else no. failing me. And you actually lose a bit of trust in a lot of things when stuff like that does yeah. happen. So that's what probably pushed me to be the way I am today, mechanically minded and to know every and working just, part in that engine and on that yeah, bike is as it needs that's to be. Right. right. So obviously a lengthy period of rehab after yep. that. But you came back in 2012 and it was a sensational year for you. I mean, incredible. Three Red Bull X Fighters wins and you took the title. I, I approached that year with a completely different attitude. I was like, Did you? all right, let's get it done. That was actually the year I, I bought this property and got equipment and built a course. I had a say, lot of bike time, so I was feeling really confident with my own ability. What was it like for you to finally put that stamp 
I've won X Fighters, Red Bull X Fighters World Series. It must have been pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It just kind of brought shivers in as you said it. Levi Sherwood is your new World Tour Champion. The style that you took it on Cockatoo Island in Sydney, in the final, up against a man who would become an arch rival of yours. I mean, it was already bubbling there, the start of that rivalry, but Tom Pages, another man, I think a lot like yourself, actually, like a real pioneer, a man who does his own thing and goes out, sort of a competitor, has he been to you? He's pushed me to do a lot more than I probably ever would. I gotta take my hat off to him, what he's done in his riding and, and his ability on a bike and his ability to really push it. Amazing. I don't think he has the switch of that's work, that's play, you know, and I, that's one thing for me is like, my career is just business. It is what it is. There's, yeah. there's going to be stuff, but go to the bar and have a beer later, you know, we're all yeah. friends. But um, that was the year that all kind of started shifting. And from that point onwards, it completely changed for probably did it? the entertainment of everybody else. Well, to be honest, it did produced some of the most, some of the best sporting drama I think I've ever seen. And it's the starfish shouted opener again from Sherwood. It's one of those tricks he's got that he knows Pages can't get close to. Stepping it up, but a virus to backflip! He does the backflip and he lands it! Oh my word, Pages, he didn't need to do it! As hard as it might have been for you and him, it, it was... Incredible spectacle to watch, believe me. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It brought the best out of ourselves, <laughs> probably in some ways. And, and, and also, you know, ways you, not. you got your... He went off in a, in a completely different direction with, with FMX and, like, yeah. the introduction of quarter pipes and just mad sort of BMX sort of tricks that we'd never seen. I love the fact he's gone off and done his own thing and that's one thing I pride myself on is probably not jumping in line and becoming a sheep. It became that if you weren't doing what he was doing or you, if you weren't re prepared to walk that line, that what you did didn't count. There was a lot of like new ramp this, new ramp that, and a lot of like secrecy behind stuff. So you turn up to something and you're like, well, I've never seen that ramp before. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to jump it without weeks and months of training. No. And now it's here at this competition that's supposed to be a fair playing field. So yeah. that kind of stuff really got me. And, yeah. And I, um, I really lost the love of our sport you did. through you that. You did, mate. And you did. You had a couple of years sort of in the wilderness with it a little yeah, bit, where I could see that you riding around. I remember watching you, and you were, I hate to say it, and tell me if I'm wrong, but you were almost just going through the motions a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. This is what we were talking about. Different we styles. Egg roll. Well, it's a crash. It's a weak crash, but he's gone down. He's dropped the bike. He just washed out. What has happened there? Over all the tricks in Levi Sherwood's run, you would not have picked him falling on this one. Unlucky for Sherwood, I have to say, incredibly unlucky there. I felt like I was just swimming upstream and, and more crap, you know, every time you feel like you finally make way with something, you just keep coming. So in the end, I was just like, you know what, stuff it. But I guess that all turned around and culminated in what has to be, if not the greatest run, one of. Red Bull X Fighters, 2017, Madrid. Not one, but two double backflips, both with tricks. Oh my God, that uh, was buttery perfect. smooth. Look at this, he's going for the double ramp again. No, no hand double backflip. <laughs> no handed double backflip. Never, oh. ever has there been two double backflips in a freestyle motocross run. How did you go from that 2014 to pull in you know, the, the most risky trick really in FMX, not once in a run, twice, and tricking it. I knew I could do more. I was probably always held back for fear or, or whatever, injuries. And then once I could kind of really let go of a lot of things, I mean, man, I was just, I just, I just didn't care, eh? I was just out there having fun and I wasn't worried. You said you know? wanted to be a boss again, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and, and I that. knew I could be. I knew I had more left and I've achieved Everything that I achieved that I, wa I wanted to, you know, since I was what, 17, I wanted to, you know, get these trophies and medals or whatever. Yeah. But to me, um, I realised they didn't really mean a lot, you know. It's, no. it's cool because you're out there chasing it. But for me, I was like, man, I'd, I'd win some of the biggest events I'd ever won and, and, and go home unhappy, you know. Really? Is that really how it was? Because I didn't ride the best I'd ever ridden, you know, or I, I still had more in the tank. And that's when I started to learn, like, 
let's see what you can do. Like, where is this limit? Let's, let's find it, you know? It's getting a bit warm in here. I feel like a little wander around the property. I want to go and see some ramps down in the valley. Sure. Can we do that? Yeah, let's do it. Come on in, mate. Let's hit it. We were talking about your first Red Bull X-Files win 10 years ago. I also remember that 10 years ago was when we first saw the double backflip in a competition run, you know, with Cam Sinclair doing it. It's a trick that is so fraught with risk. Oh, no. But now you're doing it. Yeah. What brought that about? I mean, those early days, we couldn't wrap our heads around it. We had nearly two divisions of our sport. There was best trick and then there was freestyle motocross runs. And Cam was the first person that really took a best trick and done it in a run. So We all remember being there and watching it for the first time. And he makes it! The first ever double backflip in freestyle motocross competition! And it was so raw. Yeah, it was a huge turning point in our sport. Is it a foam pit trick to start with? Yeah, done it a few times in the foam pit, um, maybe half a dozen times. Only that many? Red Bull helped me out and we set up the uh, airbag here, which was just a huge turning point. Like, I think without that airbag, I wouldn't have been able to put in the practice um, confidently before no. that season, yeah. How much harder is it to do a double backflip with a trick? It was a lot of, lot of work, a lot of practice to, to get the double flip and then to throw in those tricks. I mean, I didn't want to just come out and do the same thing everyone else had done. Oh, All right, knack, knack, knack double. double back. Gosh, just, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I love that trick. It is so insane and cool and sick all at the same time. I really wanted to do a no-hander. No-handed! No -handed. Double backflip. <laughs> no-handed double backflip. I worked so hard on that. I remember there was just months and months of like doing double flips, tucking in and trying to take my hands off. But... Whilst rotating That's right. twice upside down through the air on a motorbike. Right? Yeah, and a double flip, you're spinning so much faster. So as soon as you actually take your hands off, it actually pulls your whole body up. You're actually probably spinning two and a quarter to two and a half flips, but you open it right up so it slows it back down. No way. Oh, oh no, there you go, oh, Leon oh, Sherwood. He's got no himself way. a win here in Madrid. Oh. What did it feel like that night in Las Ventas to win in that style with the biggest tricks? Oh, it was amazing. You nearly feel untouchable. You know it's yours for the taking if you do what you set out to do. Well, one person who's definitely been almost on the bike with it, all those x fighters and then for your whole career is your dad. He's been on the journey with you. He's watched it from where I've watched it. Uh, I'm going to go have a chat with him now, and I'm going to catch up with you later on in your workshop. Definitely. We'll see you soon. Nice one. Nice to meet you, Rob. How are you, mate? All right? Come in. Well, Dave, you're Levi's dad. Thanks for joining me in an interview. I know you don't do many of them. I guess like most lads who ride bikes, you, the dad, had, had the interest in motorbikes in the beginning. Is that true? Yep. Yeah, you raced Speedway for about 20 years. Did you? Yep. Good at it, were you? Reasonable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then I guess that led to you getting Levi on a bike, did it? Yep. What age did he first get on a bike? Started racing when he was four. He um, ran a quad when he was about three. Was he? Yeah. Was he really? Uh, yeah. And how old was he then that he decided, or you both decided, for him to have a go at freestyle motocross? I had a guy that was working for me at the time, and his brother just started to get into freestyle and was pretty sort of new in New Zealand. And like Levi was only nine then, and he wanted to set up a, um, a ramp somewhere. Of course, we had a bit of land, and of course, it ended up at our place. Did it? <laughs> yeah. And they used to come down practicing, and once the, the kids saw that, well, that put us in to um, motocross. No. Yeah. What age did you realise that he really had a talent for, for hitting ramps? Probably um, when he rode in the Krusty Demons the first year they came, when he was 12. Was it fearful for you watching him then? No, it wasn't too bad back then. <laughs> it got worse. Yeah, it got worse. <laughs> <laughs> when the flip's coming. Yeah, that's yeah. right. What is it you think that makes Levi so special? He's dedicated. 
And he, he makes when he makes up his mind he wants to do something, he'll he makes sure he, he, he does it. Yeah. And then, like, he, he always... spends a time, you know, working out how to do it. We'd film all the um, the practicing, and he'd always come back and have a look at the video, and then he'd say, "Oh, we can get that a little bit further stretched out," and I think that's how it came about. Do you remember him? going out into that arena for the final and Red Bull X-Fighters back in 2009. It's still memory because we were watching on the screen. Were you nervous at this point? Yeah, pretty nervous. <laughs> I didn't think you'd admit that. <laughs> yeah, I do get a bit nervous. Yeah, damn right. And the crowd were behind them too. Yeah. Because we managed to get a um, soccer jersey from the Mexican team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wore that throughout the night. No way, <laughs> yeah. that's right. I remember that as well, yeah. actually. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. He's at a point now, or most of the top riders are, where the equipment is behind what they yeah. want they want to do. Yeah. And he won't tell us too much about what he does to his bike. You prepared to throw any light on it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I might get toothed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'll so. I'll be banned from the shed. <laughs> yeah. This is, I guess, the latest reincarnation of what a normal motocross bike used to look like into an FMX bike. That's right, yeah. I mean, it's probably been like a couple years in the making. I started with a bike that was 107.5 kilos. Which is a standard yeah. that's motocross right, that's bike. Right. And then just as I actually built this bike up, uh, what, a month ago, after my last crash, this one weighed in at 89 kilos, so that's... Um, lighter. Yeah, the carbon fiber is awesome. I love that. That's kind of where my passion is. And you make that, right? That's right. Yeah. And you've taught yourself. Yeah. What, how to make from Everything, scratch? Everything. Yeah. Is that engine standard, or have you gone in there and done some things as well? Every single part of this bike is now being remade, changed. Or, Every bit. Or really? Pretty much. I mean, I can't say too much, but <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, every single thing has been done, you know? Uh, there's nothing that hasn't been unturned or, or untouched or, uh, or not even thought, thought about. Fancy being able to build, you know, a lot of your own bike that you're going to ride. It's incredible. Yeah, it's a cool it's feeling. A dream. I mean, in the beginning, when I really started to push my riding, without knowing it, my bike was so limiting. It wasn't until I started building this bike and understanding its potential of what I really can do, and each time I do sink, I'm learning. I've got to relearn and ride my bike, and I'm actually a little bit nervous sometimes, you know, because things can happen too easy, you know, without the effort. I actually can now let the bike do a lot of the work for me when I'm doing spins and certain things. You know, I have to say, I think that light bike is just, it's helping him rotate quicker and lower than Sheehan has to be on that big 450. It's completely lifted the roof off the limits. It must um, be an incredible learning process for you. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, the carbon fibre don't stop at just the bikes. Couldn't help but notice these, uh, <laughs> which I hate to say I've had a fair bit of use, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was... That's the um, light, mate. Yeah, well, when I broke my ankle, I was using the crutches and the junk, so I thought I'd better make my own. They're nice, they are. Yeah. Right, I want to have a look around your work. Cool. Can I? We well, don't just like motorbikes, it's a fast car. Yeah, I like playing with all sorts of different things, I guess. Do you do a lot of work on, the, on these yourself as well? Not too much. I don't know, I just like the technological side of things, the performance. I like making something better, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I like yeah, perform yeah. at its best. Wouldn't be uh, in New Zealand without a ute? Nah, definitely not. Or a Land Cruiser. That's my dream car. That is your dream That's car? That's dream car. Everyone grows up, they want a Lamborghini or an Audi, I want a Toyota Land Cruiser. No way. So, yeah. And I can't help but notice slung on these <laughs> shelves. Well, gonna bring back memories for me, better ones for you, but like, is that what I think it is? Red, it's a Moscow Red Square. Red Square, yeah. mate, look yeah. at that. What a bonkers place to ride a motocross bike. I know, right? Uh, and then to win it even better. Yeah, Red Bull X Fighters always made the best trophies. What's that one up there, the light bulb? That's it's London. Gonna be London, isn't it? That might be the first year, there's the second year. Look at that one. Here's actually quite a cool one. So this is from Mexico City. The first win in 2009. That's right, yeah. That's incredible, eh? Yeah, I think they're all here. This is from um, Sydney. No way. Yeah. Dude, 
You're not tempted to have a trophy room? I'd have them all on show. Yeah, well, I'd probably go out wearing day. that most, <laughs> most days of the week. Yeah, one day I might do something with them, but until now, I'm too worried about moving forward. Still more to be done, so um, no point looking back. I must say, it's been absolutely incredible. I've thoroughly enjoyed looking back at Red Bull X Fighters, hanging out with you again, you know what I mean? It's been, uh, it's been amazing. And, you know, I guess before I go, I've got to ask you, what is next? Because you haven't told me that much about what's coming up. Yeah, well, anyway, Rob, it's been good <laughs> having you. We'll, um, we'll leave it at that, and we'll catch you next time. I mate. look forward to the next chapter, Levi. I really do. Thanks a lot, mate. Uh, I'm on my way to... Uh, I'm on my way to Levi Sherman's house. It's starting to really affect my throat. Yo, good day. I'm not after you, sir. I want to know where Levi Sherwood lives. Wow. Next trick, next trick, next trick. And I just started having fun with it. He won't tell us too much about what he does to his bike. You prepared to throw any light on it? No. <laughs> <laughs>